Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with a video that I hope will help some of you guys improve your gameplay a little bit. And these are the things that I do to help my own gameplay. And while these this list is by no means exhaustive, it is also not intended to be, um, you know, overly generic either. I'm, I'm trying to be specific enough to actually give legitimate tips for you. So hopefully this ends up working out and doesn't end up being a complete and utter disaster. The number one thing that I do to improve my gameplay, and I hope you're all sitting down for this, is I don't hide my stats and I do pay attention to my stats on third party web pages like warships.today. Now, before you freak out and start typing away at your co at the comment section, I can hear you doing it. Stop. Listen for just a moment. What I am saying here has nothing to do with comparing yourself to anyone else. Under no circumstances am I saying that this is a tool that you should use to shame other people or to make yourself feel better because so-and-so is a terrible player and you're not. What I am suggesting here simply is to give yourself a tool that will track your gameplay in near real time. And Warships Not Today is just one example of it. There are other ones out there. It doesn't matter which one you use. The end goal is to have something that is tracking your statistics in game, whether that's average XP, which is a good indicator of whether or not you're playing for objectives, average damage, which tells, you know, tells you if you're actually contributing to your team in some meaningful way, or, you know, all the other stats. They're all important stats. And by no means am I suggesting that you should also obsess over these stats. I mean, people get caught up in this idea of, oh, well, you know, I'm not a super unicum, so my stats don't matter, or peace, you know, you're a unicum, whatever. And I, no, it doesn't really matter because those stats are very easy to game. What I use them for is I will take a ship and I will go, okay, you know, I'm doing really bad in this ship. So I'm going to track how I do as I play this over a course of battles. And if I'm improving in those battles, then I know that what I'm changing in those battles is actually helping me do better. If my score is going down or remaining flat, well, I know that I need to find something to change it. And it just kind of helps you get locked into this next tip, which is identifying the ships that you need to improve in and play them until you figure them out. I can't stress this enough. It's like driving a car in a performance driving environment. Seat time matters and playing ships. It matters how many battles you have in a game. How many battles is entirely dependent upon you. What I might be able to figure out in five to 10 battles may take you 20 or 40 or 50 or might even take you a hundred or a thousand. I don't know. The end goal here though is to play the ship and to actually explore what it can and can't do. And this will tie into another one that we'll get to in just a little bit, but you definitely need to use you know, stats to figure it out because sometimes I'll play a ship and I'll go, man, I'm playing like absolute crap. And then I will go and look at the stats and I'm actually not playing them that bad. Uh, you know, maybe I'm a little bit above average. Maybe I'm just at average and I just need to play a little bit more games to figure it out. And that's one more reason why you need stats. Of course, the counterpoint to this and my next tip to improving your gameplay is don't just play one ship all the time. Now, there are people out there, Woe9, that play ships to an absolute extreme, and I love Woe to death, and he's a really good Iowa player, but at some point you have to draw the line because if you plateau once you're playing a ship and you can't seem to figure it out and none of these other tips are helping you, well you're going to have to play other ships. And more specifically, where this is an advantage is, let's say that you're trying to improve your battleship gameplay. The best way to understand battleship gameplay isn't to play a whole boatload of games in battleships. It's actually to play games in destroyers and cruisers. Why? Well, destroyers are your natural hunt. You know, those are the ships that are naturally hunting you. Those are your, your counter in the game between them and carriers. And you will learn very quickly by playing destroyers exactly how and where destroyers will launch ambushes at you if you're in your battleship. If you play cruisers, you will definitely figure out all the different signs 
that lead up to when a, a cruiser is going to a launch torpedoes is if you're in a close in engagement or when a ship is going to turn around or when a ship is going to shoot all of those things can be figured out by playing other classes and it's not just limited to battleships you can do this with any of them in fact some of the best Destroyer hunting cruisers will tell you more about destroyer gameplay and what to do and what not to do than playing destroyers do. And the same holds true for playing cruisers to figure out what to do and what not to do when being shot at by battleships. So in kind of contrast to my previous point of play a ship until you figure it out, sometimes you reach a point where you figured out how the ship plays but you're still at a level where you know you're unhappy with it and you want to improve, now you need to dive into another ship class to help you improve your gameplay because sometimes you can play off the tactics of other ships far better by exploiting their relative weaknesses and pre-planning for their strengths to minimize their impacts. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a, a battleship and I'm coming around a, a corner where I know a destroyer's behind. I've slammed on the brakes and there goes two sets of torpedoes past and then I come around the corner and smack the destroyer for all it's worth. And that's the kind of gameplay mechanic that you learn from playing destroyers to help your battleship gameplay. And like I said, it's not just battleships. So don't. I'm, I'm just using battleships as an example here. Um, I definitely use that one all the time. That to me is by far one of the best ones. In fact, if you go and you look at the total number of games I played in a ship, I think the most I have is like 175 and I, I want to say it's Iowa. Not a whole lot of games in, in, in Iowa by herself, but ultimately I've played such a wide variety of ships that in different play styles of ships that I kind of have an idea of how those ships play. And it's very easy for me to counter. Now the extreme to this is if you play enough ships and you learn their strengths and weaknesses, you'll actually be able to counter those ships in game a lot easier too. One other question that I get all the time is when should I be switching from armor piercing to high explosive or from high explosive to armor piercing? armor piercing. And the answer to this may seem obvious to some of us, but it is actually quite nuanced in how you do it because depending on what ship you're in, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to switch from one to the other. Like, for instance, if you're in a battleship, and I personally don't recommend this, but you're in a battleship and a destroyer suddenly pops up, are you going to switch to HE then? My recommendation is not to, and I've said this before in other videos, AP does a lot of damage to destroyers, but... Let's say you're in a cruiser and you've got AP loaded. Okay, well now we need to narrow it down. Does my cruiser have a long reload or a short reload? Do I have expert loader or don't I? And those kind of things really can kind of muddy this up. So in general, what I will do is if a ship is coming towards me, I will shoot HE at it. The exception to this is if I'm in a battleship. If I'm in a battleship, I'm just going to go hunt for other ships to shoot at in the meantime. Uh, unless there's nothing else to shoot at, in which case then I'm going to aim for the superstructure of it because you can still get over pens on the superstructure and that's still going to be damage ahead. Sometimes if you're close enough, you can actually put rounds into the turrets and either knock them out temporarily or knock them out permanently, which is definitely an advantage, especially if you're going to do a, a joust maneuver, you know, when you sail past each other at point blank range and pirate barrage them. Um, so, you know... Generally speaking, I, I tend to shoot HE at things coming towards me or going away from me that are presenting a very narrow profile. When a ship starts to turn is when I'm going to launch that salvo so that when he is broadside, I have armor piercing up and loaded. And you can kind of tell, and especially if you've played cruisers a lot and you're playing your battleship, you can really tell when a cruiser is about to start and he's getting nervous and you can tell when he's about to start to turn broadside. And if you're in a battleship in that situation, you've probably already missed the opportunity to actually punish him with AP. And if you had HE loaded, which again, I don't recommend in a battleship ever switching from AP. Uh, there's just not too many times that it's really all that useful. But um, you can really plan that. And the key to that is patience. And that's, that's hard to get used to. But if you're in a cruiser and you have a good enough rate of fire, you can definitely shoot HE until they start to turn and then switch to AP and then start pounding their broadside and then switch back with relative ease. And so my recommendation is if it's presenting a broadside to you, try AP. You'd be surprised at how many people don't use armor piercing on cruisers like Zhao 
Zhao's AP is ridiculously overpowered for a ship as ridiculously overpowered as it is. And Hindenburg, another perfect example of a cruiser where people are trying to shoehorn it into this role of being a HE spammer. And it's not an HE spammer, but it does really well. If you pick up a broadside battleship, you can lop off. I've seen salvos as high as 16,000 damage from just AP on Hindenburg alone. Zhao, I've seen upwards of 12,000 without any citadels. That's just straight penetration. And if you're close enough to some battleships that have high citadels like Iowa and Montana currently do, but won't in the future, you can actually citadel those ships sometimes if you're close enough to them. And that can be an absolutely insanely high damage number. And so you've got to use AP, and I definitely recommend it. There's very few ships that I actually don't recommend using AG on, or sorry, AP on, and um, mostly it's destroyers. The only other cruiser that really comes to mind are the five inch gun cruisers like Atlanta. The AP is really situational and I recommend treating it like a destroyer. So what if I'm in a destroyer? Do I ever shoot AP? Well, yes, no, it just depends on which destroyer you're in. Obviously, German destroyers get a, a bonus to their AP damage. Uh, because of the German national bias or uh, national flavor. Sorry, not bias, flavor. And the Russian DDs also do have pretty good AP. U.S. DDs, it's a little less useful, but it still can be useful in very close in engagements. And as I've posted in other videos before, destroyers can actually citadel cruisers, depending on the cruiser, Anything less than about six kilometers and in, it just kind of depends on the cruiser. Sometimes it's a little bit closer, sometimes it's a little bit further. A Farragut facing off against an Omaha, you can probably citadel that thing at seven, eight kilometers. That's really not that close of an engagement. I mean, you're still well within your stealth range at that point. But you can citadel those ships if they present perfect broadsides to you. And yes, at the rate of fire of destroyer guns, that armor piercing adds up quick. Destroyers like a Kiziki, the Tier 8 Japanese gunboat, the anti-aircraft destroyer, that ship's AP is almost a requirement to use because the HE is so anemic and doesn't have any penetration value and it's not doing any damage. So the AP actually becomes your primary source of damage in that case. But for like most ships, uh, most destroyers, you're going to end up using HE at longer ranges. It just kind of depends on the ship that you're shooting at and the profile it's presenting to you. So those are kind of the situations that I, I use HE and AP on, and I hope that really kind of helps you out with that question. I know I get that question quite a lot. Battleships, it boils down to basically stay with AP. There's really no point in shooting HE at destroyers. Knocking out the, you know, the, the modules can be useful, but at the end of the day, the damage is more useful. Uh, cruisers, it just kind of depends if they're coming towards you, shoot HE at them. If they're starting to turn, you know, you can shoot the salvo of HE you've got loaded, then switch to AP and watch the citadels rise as they turn. DDs, if you're real in close to cruisers, switch to AP when they turn broadside. Man, watch their health just drop. Okay, so this last piece of advice that I've got is very simple. Do something radical. One of the hardest things for us as human beings to do is to accept that we've made a mistake and to learn from that mistake. Ultimately, this is the crux of this whole argument is that, you know, mistakes suck to make, but they are also one of the best learning tools that we as humans have. And what I have found is that some lines make absolutely no sense. Like if you try and play a Royal Navy cruiser from long range because they're so soft and squishy and they die so easily, you don't do anything to with your team. You don't really contribute. But if you play them up close and personal, use their torpedoes, use the fact that they have no armor to watch the shells over penetrate your citadel and get in there close, you can absolutely wreck face with them. And it was so counterintuitive the first time I played the Royal Navy Cruisers. It was like, what? What was Wargaming thinking? This is like the worst way to play these ships. But what it taught me was that I should really begin to push my own personal boundaries where pushing myself outside of my own comfort zone where, okay, so Japanese battleships are good at long range sniping, right? What happens if I take a Fuso and put it into a brawl? That's a really bad situation to be in if you're not used to it and you don't know the right ways to mitigate damage. But what you learn from that one engagement 
can give you tools that will help you as a player improve. And this is this this goes back to the my argument with the Japanese destroyer guns. Yes, they've received countless buffs and it is fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I am not complaining about buffs to it. But the Japanese destroyers post tier 6 have always been fine. It's just that people are unwilling to use the guns on them. And now with the stealth fire removal, now people are even more upset by it. They still work. They still work extremely well. And I know there's a bunch of people who are pissed off when I said that because they left down votes on that video. But it's true. The guns on Shimikaze have always worked. The guns on Fubuki have always worked. Akatsuki is a fantastic destroyer for using guns and punishing other destroyers. You, you've got to use them. The only way you can find out when you can and can't use them is by using them and practicing with them. It's counterintuitive at times, but it is so critical to l the learning process for each ship that if you're plateaued and you can't figure out why, take your current comfort zone and work outside of it. Maybe that's taking a U.S. standard and pushing the distance on it and getting used to the longer range gunnery or lack thereof. Maybe it's taking a Japanese battleship into an all-out brawl up against the German battleship and learning from the mistakes or successes that you make there. And that can be really hard and uncomfortable to do because we play video games for fun and so many people don't want that extra stress of having to learn that. But if you really want to improve, you have to push the limitations of what a ship can and can't do. And I can't tell you the number of battles that I have where I've tossed out replays because I did something completely stupid and I got punished for it. It's a natural part of the game. And to get better, you're going to have to get used to that. Anyway, I hope these tips have really helped you guys. I know that these tips have always helped me in the past. And I know that bringing up stats sounds like a really crazy thing to do but at the end of the day they are useful you know play a ship until you know its strengths and weaknesses play other classes of ships until you understand how they interact with the class that you're trying to improve know when to shoot he and ap and then push the limits anyway i'm your peacekeeper like comment subscribe and thank you for watching